So this workshop has begun and it is about desires based on Bhagavad Gita as it is. And chapter 2 verse 70. So translation, a person who is not disturbed by incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Purport by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada, although the vast ocean is always filled with water, it is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with much more water. But the ocean remains the same, steady, it is not agitated. Any of you cannot hear me, please let me know. So, Mataji, the uh, workshop has begun and we are seeing from Bhagavad Gita chapter 2, verse 7 0. Purport. Continuing, the devotee is not disturbed by such desires because of his fullness. A Krishna conscious person is not in need of anything because the Lord fulfills all his material necessities. Therefore, he is like the ocean, always full in himself. Desires may come to him like the waters of the river that flow into the ocean. So, desires may come to him like the waters on, or the, of the rivers that flow into the ocean, but he is steady in his activities and is not even slightly disturbed by desires for sense gratification. That is the proof of a Krishna conscious man, one who has lost all inclinations for material sense gratification, although the desires are present, because he remains satisfied in his in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. He can remain steady like the ocean and therefore enjoy full peace. Others, however, who want to fulfill desires even up to the limit of liberation or to speak of material success, never attain peace. The fruitive workers, the salvationists and also the yogis who are after mystic powers are all unhappy because of unfulfilled desires. But the person in Krishna consciousness is happy in the service of the Lord and he has no desires to be fulfilled. In fact, he does not even desire liberation from the so-called material bondage. The devotees of Krishna have no material desires and therefore they are in perfect peace. So friends, we will read the translation again. So the topic is how to cultivate spiritual desires. Friends, if you cannot uh, understand English, please let me know so that I can talk in Hindi also. You can unmute yourself and ask any question or even let me know if you cannot understand. So continuing with the topic is how to cultivate spiritual desires ya adhyatmik ichhayen kaise banaye kyunki man mein usually conditioning ke karan bautik bhav desires aane lagti hai din bhar. So based on Bhagavad Gita ye workshop hai. So wapis hum translation ko repeat karenge a person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean which is ever being filled but is always still can alone achieve peace and not the man who tries to satisfy such desires so prayers om agyana kimran dasa gyanan jana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasme shri gurave namaha so continuing to the next slide So, this is the verse 2.69, it is on the same topic, desires. Ke mein. So, it is say, the verse is, What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self controlled, and the time of awakening for all beings is the night for the introspective sage. Ki materialist uh, karmis, though ha, they have more of material desires, so they have plans in the night to do go to pubs or go to eat non veg, and they sleep late and they wake up late. But spiritualists or devotees, they wake up, they sleep early and wake up early. Because even in material life or material success, one has to sleep early and wake up early. Because early to bed, early to rise makes a man, makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. In the night time, kya, the karmis, they go to pubs or some sex gratification. While the devotees sleep early because they have to rise early to, to do the japa. While the karmi sleeps late and he wakes up, I mean he, the karmi, wakes, karmi sleeps delayed and wakes up also delayed. So in the morning, that especially that morning time is in a Brahma Murat, one and a half hour before sunrise, that is most conducive or beneficial for, for focus. 
because if anyone focuses on the japa during the date time it's not easy to concentrate because the mind would be uh, repeatedly thinking about all the uh, routine uh, profession hobbies household chores cleaning and all that but in the morning time it is easy to subdue matlab that thoughts can be easily controlled but after the brahma mohurt time it is not easy to control therefore it is advised which is suggested by the teachings that you have to wake up early and do the japas you got to complete all the japa before the breakfast if you make that habit then automatically you can control the desires because desires control requires mind management and mind management most important for this age is chanting because chanting fixes the mind it fixes uses the tongue it uses the ear it is uses the you have to repeat repeat and therefore automatically when mind is controlled by japa the desires can be controlled because there's a common question like how to control desires so you have to immediately bring the mind back if you, that is practice to japa if you practice to japa then you can do it, do it during the day also if any time any thought comes of any mundane gratifications you have to first give the priority that you have to first do it all the spiritual plans all the japa reading hearing like this class so you should be fully focused so if any thought comes you have to immediately bring the mind back by hearing one tip practical tip is there that if you are doing any uh, household chores like cleaning or even sweeping the floor then better than switching on the music player you should listen you should yourself do some recite some verse or sing some bhajan or even chant the maha mantra because if you do it on your own you would use your tongue also you would use your ear also so that would will be easy for you to focus but if you use the music player then sometime your mind would go to the music player sometime your mind would go into the work of cleaning the utensils or sweeping so it is better you uh, sing yourself if you have to listen to kirtan during uh, working like uh, safai ke time pe or cooking then you yourself sing because you would be using your speech also and you use your ear also so it is e- easier and better to focus that is a practical tip how to control desires especially mundane thoughts while you are doing household chores now so called bondage it, in this verse we read in the purport that it is called so called bondage so called because for the devotee it is not bondage because the devotee does not consider the property of his own he considers all the property of belongs to krishna so it has to used to be krishna because otherwise if we use the property of krishna for our own sense gratification it is like stealing because everything belongs to krishna so why should we use it on our own we have to use it in his service that's why there is no bondage for devotee because devotee uses f- not for himself so therefore there he does not any reaction because he does work for krishnas therefore the the results are given to krishnas therefore the devotee does not any reactions because if there is enjoyment there is if the, we keep the results now for example if you earn some money then if you keep, use not use the money for krishna service then automatically you will use it for your own for own gratification then you get reactions because it is for selfish category because originally everything belongs money belongs to krishna so if it not used to krishna service it is like stealing and stealing causes punishment and that punishment means reaction so if you utilize the money it is not that you have to donate full money but you have to use it in your own krishna conscious activities like for going out to temple to purchase something to purchase uh, some paraphernalia like gift shop so in this purport it is mentioned so called material bondage because devotee is not envious of krishna and sees material world as energy of krishna and utilize the energy in krishna lord krishna's service so devotee is liberated even within the material body thus he is not bound because he is not bound he is liberated bondage happens when it, the materials are used in your service but if if the material is used in krishna service so there is no bondage and no bondage means liberation so not bound by material desires to enjoy lord's energy for sense gratification bondage is for one who thinks that he or she is body so if one utilizes everything for the body and connections of body that causes bondage because body is one is not the body so if you utilize in body so it is false that coming to the next slide material necessity is automatically taken care of as one utilizes material assets in service of lord krishna so if as i told you little earlier also if you utilize all your assets material assets your in hobbies your profession your studies in lord krishna's service then lord krishna will give you more intelligence to utilize the studies to the utilize the money to utilize the hobbies in your in his service but if you keep any result for yourself in your heart if you said no let me do it for the, this movie let us use this money for some uh, eating non veg or even giving the money to some karmi that causes reaction 
सो यू जितना हो सके यू शूड यूटिलाइज ऑल दी योर मनी फॉर योर ओन कृष्णा कौशल लाइफ स्टाइल यू कैन परचेज लाइक धोती साड़ीज और यू कैन गिफ्ट फ्रॉम द गिफ्ट शॉप यू कैन परचेज आइटम्स टू इंक्रीज योर ओन कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस सो दैट इज द बेस्ट वे टू एंड वन सीक्रेट टिप इज दैट इफ यू यूटिलाइज द मनी गॉड विल गिव यू कृष्णा विल गिव यू मोर मनी बट इफ यू सीज दैट इफ यू आर यूटिलाइजिंग फॉर योर ओन गैटिफिकेशन देन गॉड मे नॉट गिव यू मनी बट बिकॉज बेस्ड ऑन योर फास्ट डिजायर्स और फास्ट कर्म यू मे गेट मोर मनी बट इट मीन ऑल्सो बिंग रिएक्शंस सो बेटर यू यूज Uh, your all assets, not only money, but even your mind, intelligence for Krishna service. So God will give you more intelligence, more money. He will improve your hobbies. He will improve your intelligence to study. Also, He may even make you good rank in your studies if you utilize in His service. So, because everything belongs to Krishna, so there is no point on utilize keeping for ourselves because that would be stealing. That would be ungrateful because everything belongs to Krishna. So we should be grateful, and that gratefulness is expressed by. Utilizing the results in his in his service. So coming to the next slide, as we are talking about desires, so desires, uh, spiritual desires can be cultivated if you uh, develop higher taste. The sense gratification reduces in proportion to cultivation of higher taste. So as long as one has not developed higher taste, one will get lower taste. Matlab is if you have not uh, cultivated higher desire to serve Krishna, to do japa properly, to serve properly. and to read properly to hear lecture properly then automatically you won't be able to give up the lower taste so that cultivation of higher taste comes by practice and practice what by japa by hearing by reading so when one gets higher taste then automatically one gets develops distaste to lower taste of material desires to that proportion as devotee engages time in krishna consciousness there's no time or urge left to satisfy material desires or enjoy separately so in even in this Verse we read that the devotee is full, means he does not even is not disturbed because he is so much. His time table is like that that there is not even place for some material extra like illicit activity like smoking or drinking or going to pub because his time table is like that now morning japa time then uh, cooking for Krishna the singing for Krishna dancing for Krishna going to temple so there is no time left only so as we read in the purport the devotee is full. because full means all these time tables is all these activities are full spiritually so there's no time for thinking oh let me go to movie or let me that because and that is developed by practice it is not it may not be easy one time it is developed by practice the more one chants and keeps because chanting you know it is like a medicine in the beginning it may feel very bitter and boring but it is like a medicine if medicine is taken it may be bitter but it gives healing it improves the consciousness and you feel better healthier similarly if chanting na you may feel boring like what is this repeatedly repeatedly but it is like a medicine so if you keep chanting keep chanting and you develop higher taste automatically lower taste would go away and there would be no time and space for lower taste so uh, ocean does not overflow because water evaporates desires come but devotee does not act on the desires so as i told the it is like a itch the desires are like a itch like you know in the skin any problem is there you itch it becomes worse but if you leave the skin as point the area of the skin it automatically heals so if you don't uh, at pay attention to the desires the desires would go away and you will remain healthy like the healthy skin after if one does not itch and how to not itch you have to make the mind go to some other you know if any go to some road it is a no road closed due to some construction then you have to divert to some new road that new road means japa or hearing or reading if you bring your mind back to the spiritual road then your mind automatically go out of material road and then it will be easy not to get distracted by the material road and that comes by practice for example if you are sitting in the afternoon hear, hearing uh, some mundane fm radio is going on so but you have to immediately begin singing your own maha mantra then only you would be able to distract yourself from the fm radio otherwise that fm radio can overcome you so you have to overcome the fm radio by chanting by reading some re memorize verse you can recite some bhajan you can recite prabhupad books you can open or you, you can immediately begin chanting so that is the way because you i don't know but it happens to me also if mind gets distracted it's very difficult to bring mind back then 10 minutes goes 15 minutes goes so desires all the material desires come so you have to develop the habit you have to remind your mind 
mind management that you have to bring it in service of Krishna because time is very important and human life is very precious. So mind management is very important. In the future slide, you will say about mind management. There's a verse from when, wherever and wherever the mind wanders you to unsteady and flickering nature, one should immediately bring it back under the control of the self. So that verse, you know, that is was very important verse. If you recite, if you memorize, I suggest you memorize that verse and you if you recite that verse in any difficult situation, if you kind of bring your mind back, if any, if your mind is entangled in some mundane activity, you're feeling stressed or even uh, stress load, then if you recite that verse, then you will ultimately remind yourself that you have to bring your mind back to some activity which is conducive for your ultimate uh, uh, benefit, not some material mundane activity which may give flickering benefit. So devotee feels full in renting devotional service, so does not feel hankering to fulfill material desires. As we saw in the purport, the devotee feels full. So because he is so much full that any material thought is not worth it only. He feels cheap. He feels like spitting any material, uh, bad any material thought. So devotees is full in Krishna consciousness, not disturbed or agitated by material desires. Material desires can be overcome by filling the heart with spiritual desires. Peace is possible only when there are no material desires. Because material desires give immediate relief. But it does not give peace, it gives frustration. But spiritual desires, uh, peace is possible only when material desires are overcome. Of course, one can desire material success only if the success is utilized in service of Krishna. So, giving giving up material desires does not mean that was does not work, or does not have to do hobby, does not have to do household chores. But it, they have to be transcendentalized, the quality of desires are chain and utilized in service of Krishna. For example, if you are singing, then you can sing for Krishna. This is the, All these points are very common, but we need revision. That's why this workshop is there, so that remind yourself, and again, you can apply it after the class. Like I told you many points previous also, you, can, you may ask after the class also, that you have to transcendentalize. You can sing, if you are singing hobby, you can pick a timetable that at this time I have to practice singing, at this time I have to practice reading, I have to pick the, if you make a timetable, and you stick to the timetable, then you can overcome desires, which is the point or topic of this workshop that, Workshop desires can be overcome only if mind is banished. If you make a timetable according to timetable, you stick to it and you follow it like a medicine, and then medicine will have an effect. And when you get a higher taste, then automatically you feel the distaste for the lower taste and lower desires. So, as I told you, itch is there, but the desire to no desire to scratch the itch. So, you must you should tolerate the itch. If any material desires now come, the senses may scream to you, but you should not even touch that desire in your mind to act on it because once you act on it then you get bound and then you get reactions so koi could be in the afternoon time or if you have free time you should not allow your mind to wander you should read the books take a first read the books read about five minutes then you can plan what to do otherwise if mind allowed to wander then the desires go for material things so better not to scratch the itch and how to not to scratch the itch because you have to uh, bring the mind to some better activity to some higher taste then you would, can tolerate the itch and when you do not tolerate when uh, when you tolerate the itch that time you the itch get healed or you feel healthier because if you bring your mind back to spiritual activity you will feel better and your time would be used better and not get entangled in material desires if objects of sense gratification come there is a no vacancy board in the heart the devotee would say no thank you very much to the itch of material desires because once the, uh, uh, if you develop the habit, you no, know, I have to tolerate the, the, these desires, then next time it becomes easier because you have practiced it. If you don't practice it, then it becomes very difficult. Mind gets entangled in any material activity, then you keep on thinking and sometimes minutes, hours, uh, or even whole day may go involved in some material activity. So you should practice the mind. If, if any material work you are doing, now, you take a break and you should remind yourself. You can recite that verse from when, whenever and wherever the mind wanders due to its unsteady and flickering nature, one should immediately bring it back under the control of the self. So you should immediately begin chanting, reading, just take a break, go read some verse, then your mind becomes uh, a little away from the material activity. Then you can plan whether to continue that activity or delay it and take some other spiritual uh, pending devotional service activity accordingly that these practically points you can apply. Desires cannot be artificially stopped but have to be transcendentalized in service of Krishna. For example, music profession as I told you, like you may be having different hobbies, music, engineering, law or even household activities, stitching, uh, better cooking. So all these can be utilized. Next point is material desires destroy peace although give flickering happiness. So material desires, 
दे मे गिव दम फ्लिकरिंग हैप्पीनेस मतलब इमीजिएट हैप्पीनेस एन्जॉयमेंट बट दे डिस्टर्ब द पीस बिकॉज दैट पीस इज नॉट लॉन्ग लास्टिंग दिस दिस एन्जॉयमेंट इज देयर बट दर इज नो पीस दर इज नो फीलिंग ऑफ विस फुलनेस लाइक इन वर्स इन दिस पर्पट इज मैंशन दी वॉट इज फुल सो इज पीसफुल सो स्पिरिचुअल डिजायर्स गिव पीस बट मटीरियल डिजायर्स डिस्ट्रॉय द पीस सो माइंड मैनेजमेंट एज ए टोल यू इट हेल्प्स टू कंट्रोल डिजायर्स माइंड मैनेजमेंट इज बाय चांटिंग दैट इज बाई चांटिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज इफ इन द मॉर्निंग टाइम दैट चांटिंग इज डन वेल ना देन होल डे इट बिकम्स इजी टू कंट्रोल द माइंड सो that point comes from wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self peace can be achieved only by spiritual desires chanting the maha mantra helps in mind management chanting is like medicine which acts although the person taking the medicine is aware or not of the effects of the medicine this point was told to you little early also it is like a medicine if you take it as keep keep on taking chanting chanting it will heal you and then you will feel healthier next point comes in regarding to- desires is yukta vairagya like desires have to be transcendentalized it is utilized in service of krishna so it is because it is the nature of the soul as i was told to in the introduction of the workshop messages in whatsapp that is the nature of the soul to desire so you have to utilize the desires in service of krishna so what desire what desire you have to do that is in your hands desire would come but what to desire or where to divert it as i told you that is in your hands if some desire cannot be utilized in lord krishna service then such a desire should be postponed or such a material it should not be scashed it should be then it would automatically go away so main point is you should not act on the desire any thought comes na immediately bring the mind back you write the recite that verse sing some bhajan chant some maha mantra read some verse then the desire will automatically go away that itch would go away and if and once that itch goes away when you don't scratch it then you feel healthier in the long run one example i can tell you is offering to lord krishna on the fasting day of janmashtami devotee does not consider eating before completion of fasting so before the fasting time the devotee does not eat on the day of fasting even if i mean a uh, lot of good i mean tasty prasadam is offered to krishna so devotee does not act or does not even desire to eat before the fasting time this is how to control the desires you may have heard this story many times but it is the more we hear the better it is king of south india yamuna charya he used to enjoy with palace girls but after he took to devotional service he made a nice prayer you can read it in front and he made a nice prayer when and the thought comes of any that material enjoyment of his previous uh, lifestyle then he spit at the thought so that if one devil hired this one spits at the thought so how even a king of south india he how he changed because he applied this concept of spitting at the thought of material desires how to divert how to bring the mind back to spiritual desires because devotional service is the higher taste but it requires practice it is it requires mind management it is like a medicine so you have to take the medicine if doctor says you have to take the medicine so even if it is bitter if you feel bad a loss of appetite then also if you take it you feel healthy so it is better to take it even if it is bitter story of haridas tagor almost all of you must have heard it but the more we read it the better it is some leaders they did not agree that one of them was chanting so they tried to divert him by sending a prostitute with attractive clothes who begged for uh, pleasure illicit pleasure from haridas thakur so haridas thakur kept chanting to complete the 300000 rounds and told the prostitute to wait till he completes on that day but he could not complete and tell, then he explained to the prostitute that next day he will satisfy her so the prostitute came next day also with that same uh, objective or motive to distract haridas thakur and haridas thakur was chanting next day that night also haridas thakur kept on chanting could not complete 300 rounds and told her to come next day and would surely satisfy her third day the prostitute came she kept on hearing she tried to make fun of him by chanting so in a joking way she began chanting chanting like a medicine is so effective even if you jokingly one swallows it it has a healing effect so maha mantra chanting even if jokingly one chants one develops the higher taste similarly this prostitute developed higher taste and she ca- tried to make fun of haridas thakur by chanting but that chanting it fun may began to have impact on her consciousness 
and she realized that she was trying to disturb a great saint and she begged for forgiveness she decided to chant 300000 rounds but but haridas thakur he did decided not to stay with her so the uh, the prostitute i mean the prostitute also became a great devotee this is the effect of uh, coming in contact with a great saint now we will give a small glimpse to the next verse because that is also about desires as this bhagavad gita chapter this section is very much about desires a person who has given up all desires for material self gratification who lives free from desires who has given up all sense of proprietorship and is devoid of false ego he alone can achieve can attain real peace so only as i told you when one has given up material desires then becomes free from this des- material desires and does not have proprietorship because that is the concept of real self realization isha vasya idam sarvam everything belongs to god belongs to krishna so and there's no question of enjoying otherwise if everything belongs to krishna if we enjoy for our own it is like stealing so if that proprietorship feeling has to be given up it is not mine and therefore when that is attained and can attain real peace because real peace is only attained by spiritual desires not by material desires to become desireless means not to desire anything for sense gratification in other words desire for becoming krishna conscious is actual desirelessness real desirelessness is desire for the satisfaction of krishna not an artificial attempt to abolish desires the living entity cannot be desireless or senseless but it does have to change the quality of desires a materially desireless person certainly knows that everything belongs to krishna ishavasyam idam sarvam and therefore he does not falsely claim proprietorship or anything this transcendental knowledge is based on self realization namely knowing perfectly well that every living entity is an eternal part and parcel of krishna in spiritual identity and that the eternal position of the living entity is therefore never on the level of krishna or greater than him this understanding of krishna consciousness is the basic principle of real peace real peace otherwise doing for sense gratification is like stealing or not being grateful for what belongs to krishna because everything belongs to krishna isha was idam sarva means everything belongs to krishna so that is uh, when that one realizes that there is no question of a desire for enjoying for self only and therefore he does not claim proprietorship of anything this transcendental knowledge is based on self realization knowing well that every living entity is part and parcel of krishna in spiritual identity and that the eternal position of the living entity is therefore on the never on the level of krishna or greater than him this understanding of krishna consciousness is the basic principle of real peace and real peace is attained only by spiritual desires which is the topic of this workshop so friends i request if you are free to feel ask any questions it is better that it is interactive because that is also a concept of krishna conscious to uh, ask questions answer so that i can learn from you and you may learn at least some points from a neophyte level any questions if no questions then we can stop this uh, class so thank you friends very much for coming and giving a valuable time in the group uh, if any future workshop is decided you would get the information thanks a lot for hearing hari krishna